Hello, everybody out there in the sub world. Welcome to Sub Connect, sub Connect Live. I'm here with Andre Niemeyer, my co-host. How's it going, Andre? Oh, just great. Uh, a lot of events just happened, and uh, saw you racing all over, doing incredibly well. Congratulations. Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year to everyone watching. So great to be here. We haven't been here in a while. A, lot, a right. lot has happened. A lot happened. We are all just getting through the holidays and you know, excited to start a new year. And uh, this is a show to watch, right? Because we had this show last year. Uh, we even had Santa Claus in the house. <laughs> so uh, this year is kind of like a follow-up to that. It's kind of like the year recap. We yeah. have uh, Anthony Vela here. So what is Anthony Vela bringing to us today? He is going to tell us his 10 favorite events, 10 favorite SUP events of 2012, and give us his top picks for SUP surfers, male and female, so the top five. That's so. right. And I got a sneak peek of that list, and I'll tell you, when I saw the names on the list, I was like, huh, I can't wait to hear about this. So there are some very interesting and unusual suspects on that list. And you want to make sure you stay tuned for yeah, that. Really, really exciting stuff. We did this, uh, you know, we did the same show last year. Some of those events might, may have made it on the list again. And there's some new ones. We got a nice mix of race events and surf events. So it's going to be a great show. And in our final segment in the health spot today, we'll be giving some healthy traveling tips and uh, as well as letting you guys in on what's on the radar. So some really cool new SUP events that are gonna be coming up this year. So there's a lot of and stuff. And also you forgot the top five uh, male and female of uh, AV's pick. Yeah, stand so, up stand up uh, surfers. So it's gonna be a good one. It's, but a, it's a great show, very informative for everyone, whether you're in the industry or an athlete, right? If you're thinking about which race am I gonna attend, you might wanna to listen to Anthony Vela and see which events you might wanna attend. And if you're thinking about sponsoring maybe some athletes or just taking another look, a lot of stuff happening. It's going to be a great show, so stay tuned and we'll be right back with Anthony Vela. You can have your choice, either quad or thruster setup, or whatever your choice is. You've got a beautiful foil, I think you got a nice little template here that'll be pretty versatile, whether you ride a really big board or even a pretty small stand-up board. It's almost better to have five boxes in your board. So sometimes you can ride the quad. One nice little feature that we have in the box fin, you can use an FCS key to tighten it. So you only have to carry one key. You don't have to carry a screwdriver. We had this nice swell that came by and I had uh, regular thruster fins on my stand-up paddle board. I went out and the fins were just a bit too small, they didn't have the right shape. The board was skinny on the bottom turns, off the lip and on the roundhouses. I switched to the Jerry Lopez fins designed for stand-up paddle boards and it just worked great. I was able to get good turns off the top on roundhouses and also on bottom turns. So I didn't have the Jerry Lopez fin at the peak of the swell but now I got them. I'm ready for the next swell and stoked.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here, Sup Connect Live, with Anthony Vela in the house. He's going to give us his top pe 10 picks of the year. How's it going, Anthony? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here on the Sup Connect Live set. It looks really, really nice. You guys have been working hard, so congrats to you and the crew, Andre. I'm stoked to be here. Awesome. Yeah, we're stoked to have you here. And by the way, if you want to comment, if you want to give us any feedback whatsoever, you can follow us on Twitter at SubConnect and just add the hashtag SubConnect Live. You can also leave comments on Facebook as well. So the list is going to start from 10 to 1, right? So this is the list of the top 10 events that Anthony Vella picked for 2012. So, so before we get into this list, can you give the ladies and gentlemen out there a little bit of the criteria um, of how you chose these events and how this whole top 10 AVs picks came about? Yeah, well, it just came about because it's something that I did on my own last year and was just thinking back on the year and what an amazing year at all the fun events there are to travel to. And I think that, you know, Candice, you do the most events of all the women. And I think, you know, I do a fair amount of events. So I think that I'm, you know, pretty qualified because I've been to so many of the events traveling to almost 30 different events this, this year, so including SUP racing and SUP surfing events. Now, I'm gonna start off by saying there are some events I didn't make it to that were probably awesome that did not make it onto this list. I didn't get to Europe, there's probably some cool events in Europe. I don't know what they were and, and I'm sure that they're wonderful and I hope to get there. And there's also some events that, uh, you know, maybe just didn't make it onto the list because I, I didn't get the full excitement of the race, but there's many good ones out there. So there's an honorable mention list. And uh, some of those are some of the events like the... Uh... Wait, 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 wait! Oh, okay. That's the teaser. We'll get to the honorable okay, mentions okay. right at the end, right? Okay, yeah. Well, we, no, yeah. You, we'll do it at the end. All right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. We'll do it at the end. Yeah. So maybe tri trickle in with some of those honorable mentions throughout the show, but okay. with number 10. <laughs> number 10 in eight <coughs> of the year is going to be Surfing America had SUP surfing as part of their national championships, which was held at Huntington Beach. And we were invited as part of the event. And it was just a lot of times stand-up paddling in events were almost a sideshow. Surfing America invited us in, and we were a part of the event. By the way, by the way, just a quick interrupt. Candace just had to step away, but she, step away, but she will be back. So stay tuned. <laughs> she will be back. Stay tuned. So anyway, we're back with AV's list. The top 10 picks, so number 10, Surfing America. I didn't go to that one. So it, where was that? It was held in Huntington Beach on the south side of the pier. And they had age groups. There was kids, um, under 18, women's. Uh, Chuck Patterson was ripping that day. Noah Yap was there from Hawaii. Um, you know, Dave Bainey, uh, Daniel Hughes. It was a packed event. And um, it was really an honor to be part of part of Surfing America's national championships. And, you know, we had... We had judges that were there and we knew their scores in the water and we were treated as you know a, a part of a real event and there aren't a whole lot of stand-up surfing events so that made the list for top 10. That's great uh, it's great to have a surfing event on yeah. the list so yeah. we see racing left and right so always great to have uh, uh, surfing. And there were people, like you said, from Hawaii. I think there were some Australians too. Uh, there uh, were the event, maybe. I don't think there were any Australians no, at this one. Maybe, maybe the yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So moving, moving on. We got to come on, come on, Candice, come back here. Take your <laughs> the Candice seat. Sorry, I had to clear so my throat from over there. That's all right. <laughs> so we got uh, number ten. We went through that. You probably surfed in that event, right? Um, surfing America U.S. Championships. Yeah. Awesome event. So Very much fun. Good. That was that was probably one of my you know highlighting surfing events for me because you know we got to be you out there. You won that, right? Didn't I you? did. We yeah, got to yeah. hear our scores, and I had a pretty good final, and you know had lots of adrenaline pumping. I I kind of tweaked my knee in the semis and was contemplating not even surfing because I'm you know there's so many events in the probably year. Probably shouldn't have surfed. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> you want to be healthy and. And I remember going out, and my first wave, I just, like, I don't know, I had, like, one ballistic maneuver, and then I got another sick wave. And, and the within, adrenaline kicked in, and you forgot did. about your injury, and, and within the first, you made it worse, but you won the contest. And I was, you know, I had the, the second place server comboed within the first, like, six minutes, oh so I was still oh, yeah. <laughs> bragging. Yeah. She's bragging. Well, I've never really okay. done that before, so, you know. It's okay to be proud sometimes, okay. and shout out to Chuck Patterson, Nash team manager who won every single heat that he did that day. He won uh, the age group, but also is the current U.S. champion of stand-up paddle surfing, recognized by Surfing America, winning the finals against me and Noah Yap 
Nova was second, I was third. So nice surfing Chuck winning every heat of the day. Wow, amazing. So, Great what do you think? Finish. Move on to number nine? Yeah, move yeah. on. Yeah, number on. nine coming in. Number nine was a combo event. It was the Surf Tech Shootout at Steamer Lane in Santa Cruz, which also had the Duathlon, which was a stand-up paddle race where you did one lap, which is about four miles, and then you ran about a half mile on the beach, did another lap, and then ran again at the end. So we were surfing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and also had a race on Saturday. So it encompassed everything, and we got to surf Steamer Lane with four other, four other uh, competitors out there. And it was bombing, right? What were the conditions like? Uh, it was it was bombing. It was, I mean, pretty big steamer lane, and you know, it's not really a place. I think as the ambassadors of the sport, we try and be overly sensitive to certain surf breaks, and that's a place I would honestly never go sub surf, especially when it's big and good. And it was big and pretty good size, so I had some super fun heats, took some poundings like everyone, and and it was just a really fun event that that had lots of different things. Awesome. And that that event had a lot has a lot of history by now, right? Because la not last year, or the year before, twenty eleven <laughs> was like the craziest, <laughs> heaviest event probably in the history. I don't oh, know the history. there was. I remember it was hailing was, on the beach like five minutes before the right, race started. Right, right. So everybody went into like the twenty twelve uh, surf tech shootout expecting like Armageddon, right? Yeah. Like, it's like the end of the world. This is where I'm gonna lose a limb out there yeah. to like a shark and then and the sea was gonna And for those of you that out. didn't show up because you were you heard about the year before, it was you beautiful. missed out. It was, be it was absolutely gorgeous. beautiful. It was gorgeous. So make sure you put that one on now, your list Now, you know again. what, for me, one of the highlights of that event, because anyway, I was just hanging out from the patio, uh, from the patio there, like, uh, and I was watching Anthony. He came in, everybody was pretty, pretty close. But then I had to do like a beach run. And then Anthony, just with that solid stride, <laughs> he just like gained, I don't know, a mile. <laughs> like it was amazing, one of the most amazing things. And that's why I really enjoy the format of like, you know, you paddle, you go to the beach, you run. And you did so well, like keeping your consistency, you know, in the water. Because you would see some guys, they would get to the beach, land, yeah. I'm safe, <laughs> oh, I'm dying. And uh, yeah, no, I you didn't, I didn't care for it so me. much, the running, the running <laughs> but I had, I had a little bit of a cold. And That's I was, right. that was the first time I ever actually raced with a cough drop in my mouth. I remember so that. So that, that probably, again, another event where I maybe should have not yeah, done. Yeah, but I mean, it was yeah. great. I mean, I, could, I couldn't help it, you know. Yeah, I think one, one real part cool part about that event as well as the racing and the surfing but um, it was one of the events that was that was broadcast live via subconnect that's the right, race that's, yeah, but also I think plug, I also plug. think it was really cool that you guys broadcast one of the free surfing sessions that's right at steamer lane how often do you get oh, a chance man. to see Dave Bainey, Stevie <laughs> Kinley, and a whole crew of other incredible yeah, stand-up surfers thanks, surfing th live. Thanks for reminding me of that. That was my <laughs> Guantanamo moment. I was like in prison like, <laughs> watching yeah. these guys. Now, we're broadcasting. Again, bringing the stoke to you. Watching these guys surfing so, perfect waves. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Moving on to number eight. <laughs> number eight. We have the Surf Race to Victory Final in Huntington Beach. This is like probably one of my favorites of the year. I, I just can't wait for this event every year. Tell everybody about yeah. it. This race, it's just, it's in and out of the surf, just, you know, an M-shaped course and there's elite men and elite women and it's two weeks before the Battle of the Paddle. So a lot of the top uh, male and female competitors are there from around the world. You know, the Hawaiians are in town. And so, I mean, Connor, Connor Baxter, Cody Kerbox, uh, you know, uh, Cody Kerbox really shined in this event. You know, we got a great picture of him. Yeah, Cody and, was phenomenal. And you know what was really cool about that event is, you know, lots of waves being caught before and in between and after heats on race boards and great photography by lots of people. But Harry Wywell especially got some awesome shots. Yeah, Harry. Of like the um, kids like Joshua Brackett from Lake Tahoe, really showing that. You know, he can he can handle in some big waves. Yeah, and his brother Josiah taking off on some bombs. Uh, I think Haley Harrison got a couple really good waves surfing and during the race. Diane Wenzel on her Infinity Shark board taking off and handling some really, really big waves. And shout out to Eric Terrian from France, big team rider who came from France and won the race and uh, did really good in the surf. And, and it was just, you know, that race is really exciting because it was you know, head high, overhead, some maybe even almost double overhead sets, and you're on a 12 and a half foot board. But I felt kind of like, you know, in, in those free surf sessions, everybody was kind of trying to push it and, you know, see who could 
catch the bigger wave on their race board, and there was some big wipeouts. I had I was on the beach watching this all happen, helping organize with the event, um, being a victory rider, and watching Brennan Rose take off on some of the biggest waves, trying to get as deep as he can on his road board, and uh, unfortunately for Brennan, really <laughs> unfortunately for Brennan, he broke his board before the race, oh, and man. still managed a fifth place finish in his only race after having double knee surgery so shout out to brennan too doing really good in the surf race to victory which is always one of the funnest races there's lots of starts lots of finishes lots of top competitors and there's carnage so much fun and i i love surfing the race board it's just it's just so much fun but i gotta say <coughs> your performance in the final was inspiring I mean, come on, tell us about it. Yeah, um, Andre, you know, you, unfortunately you missed it this year and, and last year. It was really exciting. It was a run up the beach between myself and Jamie Mitchell. This year the surf was a little bit bigger and more consistent. And, uh, you know, everyone's, do I wear a leash, not wear a leash? I don't like to wear a leash. I like to kind of just see what happens. And I, I like to swim and, you know, just trust in, in those skills from my lifeguarding background. And so, sure enough, the final goes. I'm the only one with no leash. And... I just, I had to go and kind of punch through some waves and diving off my board and just holding the nose up enough and, and jumping off and coming up my board was right there and so made it out ahead of everyone with the leashes on and squeaked through some waves that were tough and managed a second place and just a really, really fun event. Awesome. Surf Race to the Victory coming in at number eight. Number seven. Number what do seven. We got? It's simple. Columbia Gorge Paddle Challenge. It's in Oregon. It's one of the most beautiful places that we get a chance to paddle in. Not only do we have the racing, but you can go just across the river to the other side. You're in Washington, and there's a beautiful white salmon river, which we got a chance wow. to go down um, on stand-up paddle boards. Chuck and Cody Kerbox and Kai Lenny, these guys went on this uh, waterfall on a four-person board that you weren't supposed to even go down this. And just lots of really fun things to do in the gorge. The race itself, it's a downwind race but it's also a course race and you combine the total you know score from the two races and it's just one of the fun most fun races of the year awesome Alrighty. and coming up at number six before we go to break we're going to give you number six and this race is just right around the corner right around the corner we have the orange bowl paddle championships in miami florida one of the best venues of a race that we can have is from a, from a spectator's perspective there's all these different shops, a Hard Rock Cafe. It's a multi-level level, uh, like plaza that p there's people just around shopping. They're looking down what's going on. One of the top races of the year, Danny Ching, Candace Apple be defending champions. It'll be another fun race this year. Awesome. Yeah, because so. this is the downtown Miami, so you got a lot of non-stand-up paddlers ex being exposed to the sport. And I won the open race. I got to throw that in there. Yes, the Andre won the race, won a quick blade paddle, I believe, <laughs> right, and just right. stays hooked on sub. That's right. Moving on. <laughs> now we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back uh, picking up on uh, AV's top five and on. So we'll be right, right back. racing downwind or surf races, even flat water. It's got a partial coil, so that way the leash doesn't drag in the water. The adjustable end strap, so you can adjust it to fit a 12.6, a 14, or unlimited board. And there's also a loop around where it straps on your calf or your ankle, so you can bend over and pull the leash off really easily.
and powerful enough to change the way we live. That's how Surf Tech views the stand-up paddleboard. Our continual pursuit to raise the level of performance and technology is, is why we're the leader in stand-up paddleboards. Our commitment to this philosophy and standard is reflected by our unrivaled 20 year history and foundational belief in technological innovation. A passion for the environment has led to technologies that will not break down and fill up landfills. Ensuring the current and future health of our oceans. Imitators will come and go. We are Surf Tech. 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 Design, performance, innovation, and passion. back with none other than Anthony Vela and his top 10 events of 2012. We've gone through event 10 through event number six. Now picking up on the list, Anthony, which event is number five? Number five, we are going down to Mexico, the Punta Sayulita, Punta Sayulita Longboard and Sup Classic. Super fun event in Mexico. They've got a wonderful concert. They treat us like we're champions, it's professional longboarders, professional stand-up, invitational surfing, and then they've got races open for anyone. And that was on top of the list last year as well. I don't remember which placement, but it was there. So And you had, you know, tons of top caliber athletes, you know, Kai Lenny, Zane Schweitzer, Sean Pointer, Benina Walsh, Jenny Kalmbach, Tali Let, Gangini. And let's not forget home of Fernando Stala. Fernando Stala. And who, shout out to Fernando. We love you, Fernando. Awesome guy. We got to go hop in the boat one day and watch him do his thing and go um, go diving. It was pretty awesome. Yes. Go spear diving and yep. catching fish. Sayulita, put that on the list this year. That takes place in March. March, March, March. 9th to the 11th or 8th to the 10th that weekend. Um, a great event for a family to go down to, too. Definitely. Great event. Definitely. Really fun festival. So, number four. Number four, we've been all over the world, and now we are going to come back to where it started. Number four is this year's Battle of the Paddle, the Jerry Lopez Rainbow Sandals Battle of the Paddle in Dana Point. I mean, what can you say about the Battle of the Paddle? The kids race, the open race is one of the biggest races in stand-up paddling. The elite race with the heats and getting a chance to see all the top competitors going through the buoys, going through the surf, and doing what we do. Yeah, no, it is the, the biggest spectacle, right, for the whole event. I mean, people from all over and uh, surfing, and you're great at it. So uh, you definitely want to make sure to try to come to that one if you haven't. That is definitely a must. And there's lots of races that consider that consider themselves a world championship or use the name, but the Battle of the Paddle is a race where all stand-up paddlers would agree that that's the one that is the top race where most of the competitors come from all over the world. No, and it was amazing because we did the the live webcast of that yes, event as yes, well. Yes, yes, And we got, I think when all the numbers were added, about over 5,000 views uh, out of that event. Wow. Uh, so, uh, can you imagine? That's a lot of eyeballs a lot, there. A so, lot of eyeballs, a lot of good carnage, a right. lot of skills from the kids and adults, and just a lot of paddlers having fun, and I think that's the nature of the Battle of the Paddle. Whether you're taking part, whether you're on the beach watching, it's just an incredible, incredible event coming in at number four. So, which is also considered the, no, the world championship of stand-up paddling. So, yes. Uh, but crossing the country now. Crossing the country now. Going from California, we're going to take it over to a newcomer, I believe, to this year's top 10. And this event really, really stepped up from last year. It was an amazing event last year, 
And this year, the Paddle Royale in San Juan, Puerto Rico comes in at number three. And the main reason, they had an Aqua Glide blow up water park at the event. Oh, wow. Gee, Jamie, way to go. Huh? <laughs> right? I mean, you have Jamie Mitchell going down the water slide after he wins the event, and it's just a fun event. Beautiful. And, uh, Jamie, Jamie, I was referring to Jamie, uh, who the event organizer. Yes, right? J yes, yeah, yes. Right. Jaime, Jamie Torres, Hi, way yeah, to go. Jaime, Sorry, right. I was Torres. thinking of Danny. That's you it, said Jamie, right. I thought you meant Danny. That's so. it. Jaime, Jamie. Yes. All righty. Jaime, great job, great event. San Juan is beautiful. The people of Arecibo, Arecibo treating us like we are at home and the Australians came which was made it extra special uh, Chase Kosterlitz was there Paul oh, and wow. Angie Jackson came um, mm. from Australia so it was a, and Eric Terrian was also there really oh, fun so event very nice international <laughs> international event, event. Huh? very very deep field and Ryan Helm from Mexico was also oh, there okay. so top field for the men and the women there you go enjoy a tropical location <laughs> so number three number two we have Number two. Now back to the West Coast. Back to the West Coast for number two. There's a lot of fun events, but this year we went down to Mexico again. I believe this was last year's number one event. It's moved, it's gone down to two. Not because it was not as good as last year. It was still one of the top events of the year, but the um, Hennessy's World International World Championships combined with the Los Cabos Classic, and it became the... Hennessy's Los Cabos Mike Doyle Sup Mexico Classic. Long name, but really fun event. There was paddleboarders, stand-up paddlers, downwind race, course race. Very, very beautiful, nice award ceremony this Sunday night with amazing food. And Alfredo and Kim and everyone did a wonderful job. And we got to release baby sea turtles. <laughs> Again, right? <laughs> Again. Same thing as last year. Again. Beautiful tropical location. If you haven't been there, wonderful fish tacos as well. So you want to give that a try. <laughs> yes. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the number one, the one and only, the top event on the list of Anthony Vela. So which one made it to number one? Well, before number one, you know, there's some races that didn't make it onto the list um, that had some of the top competitors, the Tahoe Nalo, the uh, H2O Overdrive race in Utah had a very, very deep field. The, excuse me, the Stand Up World Series final in Turtle Bay had an epic final between Kai Lenny and Slater Trout and Zane Schweitzer and all of the guys over there just there's so many amazing events out there. I don't want to leave any of them out. And shout out to all the event organizers that work hard with your events. But the number one event of the year, the race that I had the Come most on. fun, the best food, the most beautiful, it was just incredible. And South Lake Tahoe, give it up for Chris Brackett and the <coughs> Brackett family and everyone who helped put together Race the Lake of the Sky there in you its go. first year. <coughs> So there you go. That's uh, I saw and it, the most incredible thing. The most incredible thing that I saw in that race was you had like these poles like stuck in the water. So what was that? Everybody was lined up. They had the poles, all the boards lined up, and you you would start from That's there, right? Sup cross. That a lot of people are using the word sup cross for river events, but that was real sup cross, taking from snowboarder border cross or BMX cross. So the gates were actually built by Chris Brackett. Who, of, so of were, South there were there gates? They were gates, there were gates as if you were gonna be going down a ski run. So there were five different lanes where each paddler, all on the same boards, pulled up to the gate with your paddle and they said, ready, go. You pulled off the gate and it was a, it was a 60 second sprint course. But this was only one of the races. There was also a five mile course race and a 10 mile uh, distance race around the beautiful, I think they call it Emerald Island or some beautiful picturesque yeah, yeah, yeah. location. But just, it was something new, the sup cross. It was so amazing and so much fun for the, you know, for the crowd. And it was kind of an uh, arena seat, seating the event. So it was just beautiful for the spectators, competitors and the food. Lake Taco is the best shrimp taco I have ever had in my life. So thank you, Lake Taco. But it just had everything, and it was a real family event. Beautiful awards. You can bring your whole family. There's a place to camp right across the street. They've already set their date. It's the last weekend in June, 
And that's definitely a race that you want to be at, as well as all of the other races and events that were on the list. Just a really fun mixture of events all over the world, California, Florida, um, there, you know, events, events like uh, uh, the North Carolina Carolina Cup didn't make it, but an another wonderful event. So what do you think about the list, Andre? Uh, I think that's an amazing list. Now I want to travel all over the place <laughs> and get to go to all the races that I haven't been to. So I missed Chris's race, but I saw the pictures and like always, oh, also the Los Cabos Classic. So let's do a quick recap for those who have missed the top 10 list of events this year. So. Num number 10, we started out with the Surfing Americas U.S. Championships. And that was, that in, was in Huntington, Huntington Beach. Beach. Yes. Surf Tech Shootout, number 9, number 8. Number 8, Surf Race of Victory in Huntington Beach, the final. Number 7. Number 7 was the Columbia Gorge Paddle Challenge. Number six, was Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Coming up in a couple weeks, Ken yep. Russell and the crew. That's right. And number five, Punta Sayulita, Longboard and Sup Classic. Kevin Roberts and the crew over there. And, and uh, then number four, Battle of the Paddle, Dana Point, California. Battle of the Paddle, what more do you need to yeah, say? <laughs> that's it. Number three is a Paddle Royale in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Number two, the Hennessy's Los Cabos Classic in uh, Cabo <coughs> San Lucas. And then number one was Race the Lake of the Sky in South Lake Tahoe. But I'd like to also point out one more thing. Did you notice that we have the, Orange Bowl, the Orange Bowl Paddle Championships, number six, I think Kristen Thomas was at that one. Yeah, shout she, out yeah, to she Kristen was, Thomas. She was, she you know was, what? She was. The Punta Sayulita Classic, I think she missed that one. Battle of the Paddle, she was there. Paddle Royale, she was there. Hennessy's, she was there. Race the Lake of the Sky. So wherever Kristen Thomas goes, you know you're guaranteed a good, there fun race. You go. There you go. Good plug to Kristen. So uh, we have a video from uh, the, the event, the race, the lake. Um, so let's go ahead and watch that video.
Okay, and we are back with a special episode with Anthony Vela, his top 10 events of 2012. And we're gonna go, gonna go to the top five athletes, male and female, in just a bit. But before yeah. that, we're gonna be showing some wakes up surfing. Before we do, I was at the Race the Lake of the Sky and Chris Brackett said, hey, do you wanna go wake surfing? I'm like, I don't know. He said, but wait, we put two boats together. 10 feet oh, apart so and create a double a weight. Frame. I said, sign me up, I'd like there to go. go. And here's a short clip. Okay, and we are back. So, Anthony, that, that was pretty exciting. Two boats. I've done it with one boat. Two boats. got a perfect A-frame. Frame. So, you want to try that out next time. Yep. We got some boats around. It was hard after 20 miles of racing in the altitude, but I did my best. And we just, you know, all of us that race, we, we love surfing. And yeah. I really... Gotta mix it up. You have right. to mix it up. Mix and, it up. And I like watching videos and, you know, seeing heats live as much as possible. And so... Because I can, and you guys are letting me, I'm going to do my top fix, top picks for top five female sub surfers. Right, and let's say this: so Anthony Vela travels all over the place, and he gets to see tons of athletes. So that's quite a bit of an insight into the you know landscape there as far as talent. So let's go start with the women from from. Let's take it from uh, number five. And if I and if I can, please, Andre, and just everyone. There are people that aren't on this list that I missed because I may not have seen. Like you I'm not on the list. I'm, gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm not on the list. This show is going to stop it, right we now. We debated it, and you yeah, were close. That's right. I'm not on the list. This is a problem. This is a, okay. Okay. Anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. Because you know, last year I was woman. I was the woman of the year. So the fact I'm not on the top five female here, I'm really upset about that. Anyway. So number five. Number five, coming out of Hawaii, former Molokai champion and just all around phenomenal athlete in person. Haley Harrison is top five, is five, number five for female AV's pick, surfer of the year. Yeah, Haley. Haley's a, he's, she's a great girl. She's uh, one of those, you know, young sub athletes that's really coming up in the ranks. Her surfing and her racing kind of just speaks for itself. And, and she's, she's one of those girls also that you know is really great on a race board in the surf and i think that is a true testament to her surfing skills. she was also a double in a hollywood movie or something wasn't she they or? had uh they had molokai the molokai race incorporated into an episode of hawaii 5 that was it that was and it. Yeah. yeah they used her as a double for uh finishing the race so. and watch out for Haley this year just uh is coming on with focus up and mo freitas who's one of the top young male surfers and they do a lot of traveling and surfing together and now they're teammates so i look for Haley to really have a breakout year again this year there we go awesome. so number four number four is very very talented surfer of all types of surfing and somebody who candace has known and helped mentor for a while and I've gotten to see this young lady surf, and it's just incredible. She actually went to the East Coast and beat, uh, won a contest versus men. So Vanina Walsh charges at just 15, and she is number four in AV's picks for female top surfers. Yeah. Vanina is just awesome, just, yeah. one of, just talented in very many ways. You know, she's, she's a model as well, and she's a great artist, um, and you know, she shortboards, she longboards, she stand-up surfs. And yeah, she went to the East Coast, I think Virginia Beach maybe, and yep, she got yep. second against the men in the men's division. Yeah. And I said, I told her and her mom, I said, don't be surprised, you know, you're going to go there and you're going to do pretty good. And yeah. uh, it was pretty exciting to see those results. You Great know. family too. Yeah. yeah. It's been fun to watch her grow up from, you know, w when she was 10, 11, meeting her in Waikiki and, and now watching her charging the North Shore on her stand up it's kind of scary but it's awesome she's great yeah. So. yeah if you see some of the pictures that they're putting up of just she's out there charging at makaha if it's too big at north shore or she's out at pupukea and just always out there charging and so I, if you're out there charging i give you props and yeah. well done it takes a lot of and she tandem surfs with bobby yep. <laughs> freeman and he takes her out the sunset when it's you know 20 foot plus 
I think they've even tandemed out at YMA together, so it's pretty cool. Oh kind of my fearless. goodness! Yeah. yeah. Watch out for Vernina, and she she actually along with Haley, she just got a new sponsor. She's Starboard. now riding with Starboard, yeah. getting a chance to be influenced, you know, by surfers like Zane and Connor Baxter and Sean Pointer. So right. congrats to Vanina. She's on the dream team. On the dream yeah. team. <laughs> Moving so, along, we getting we're getting top to three now. number three, and this is a. a um, a surfer who I didn't know, but I got a chance to see her last year surf at the C Street contest and kind of uh, caught, caught her eye like, wow, I've never seen this. She's from France and rips. This year, a uh, big gr group of um, French paddlers hung out at San Onofre and there's a lot of swell after the Battle of Paddle and had a chance to watch her surf and hit the lip. And she is an incredible surfer coming at at number three. It's Caroline, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce your last name. Candace, can you help me maybe? I think it's. I think the right way is Angebad. That's I how I've so. been saying it, but it might not be right because it might have a French pronunciation. <laughs> but Caroline Angebad. So phonetically, you can go Google her and figure out um, <laughs> who she is. But she's she. I remember when we were down at Santa, I was like, "Who's that girl out there?" I was like, "She's ripping." I'm like, "That's not Emmy." And Anthony's, yeah, that's the Hobie girl from France. <laughs> and so she's she's awesome. And here's kind of you know what what impresses me and. When you're surfing down the line and you have a, a section coming up, and you know a lot, some you know beginning surfers or female surfers. You see, I'm the section. Right? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Did you just put some beginning surfers and female surfers in the same category? I said, what was that supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they pointed all the way. There is something going on here. There are some surfers that they they nudge the lip, and there are some surfers that get to this end section and really aggressively try to hit the lip and, and, and progress the sport. And I think all of the female surfers, the male, male surfers as well, are really trying to push the limits of, of female stand-up paddling. So uh, Caroline, you definitely impressed me. And, and, and uh, young Artur as well from France. Uh, the Hobie crew, well done, well done. So what you're saying is you have to be whacking the lip to make it on your list. <laughs> you cannot be a lip dodger, or you, or like me, you cannot be a barrel dodger. You have to charge <laughs> yeah. in order to make it onto this list. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> number two, another Hobie uh, team rider. Yeah, the, number two, the Hobie boards. Be, you know, a lot of work. Colin McPhillips is doing a lot of the work helping yeah. design and shape the boards, and that's great for these girls and guys that are sub surfing. So it's number working. two, it's working. Number two is just a phenomenal surfer. Amazing. Uh, Emmy Merrill, you came in at number two in AV's picks for top female sub surfer of the year. Awesome. And, you know, Emmy is such a great example to all the other female stand up athletes out there. She's last year competed in the ISA and won the gold medal, but balanced that with her, her new career of, well, she's going to, you know, nursing school to have a career in nursing. So yeah. that's pretty inspiring to be able to balance those things at yeah. once. And um, and right on Emmy, you know yeah. what an awesome awesome girl, Saint Clemente, born and bred, and super proud of her. So and it's a good inspiration for those who are thinking, oh, I have like a day job, I can't really be doing some of hey, that. Hey, I did it. I finished college amongst all the stuff, so See, it can be done. It all the, be all done. you up and coming sub stars that are in your you know early teens, college is possible. Yeah, so. it's not all or nothing. <laughs> Emmy Merrill went to Peru while she was going to college and still managed to keep her grades up and stay in school yeah. and win the event <laughs> yeah. and impress everyone out there. So Emmy, you rip and I'm glad you're regular foot and I'm goofy so you can go right and I'll go left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so, okay, coming number one, surf tech team rider, who will that be? Um, Who would that be, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen? Coming in at number one, she charges the first female to participate in the, um, the uh, stand-up world tour at Sunset and just has pushed the limits of female stand-up surfing and has some incredible boards that are being shaped right now. And Candace Appleby is the female, AB's picks, there female sub surfer of the year. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you. You better pick me, honey. Yeah, I know. You would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember seeing Candace the first time. I was in Santa <laughs> And I was like, who is that girl? <laughs> like, women are not supposed to be doing those things. And she was just, like, gripping so powerfully. And uh, you still do. You won that Makaha 2007 or 2008. You've won <coughs> so many events. And like, like a, uh, Anthony said, pushing the barriers, the limits of what people thought would be possible for women to well, accomplish. And I don't say that lightly. <laughs> I don't, because you're my, my co-host. I don't say that lightly. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I've, I I've really been mean enjoying it. it. If you go to events, you know what I mean. I've, I've really been enjoying it. And, you know, this year there's going to be some, some exciting new things. And 
I'm really excited to get, you know, a lot more into my stand-up surfing, and um, which we'll tell you more about that in our final segment today. But it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great year, and you know, I love stand-up surfing probably more than I love racing, but I still love racing. It's fun. It's great. Um, but it's it's really cool to see how far the female surf stand-up surfers are coming, and the girls pushing the limits, and and I'm stoked to be you know right there along for the ride. So. It's it's pretty fun. And you also won Subconnect Woman of the Year. So. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, whoa. Woman of the a, Year. We might have to do an you. interview for that because uh, no, that's, that's, right, that's official. Right, that's and I'm right. not crying. That's I was right. just coughing a little bit, so in case yeah, you guys yeah. are wondering, I'm not coughing. He's getting I'm so proud emotional. of her. He's so okay. But I do have to say, uh, at Steamer Lane, there was no women's event, and Candace was out there, made the semifinals, and it was it was very sizable, surfing for three days. After doing a race, and she was sick, still charging with the man, uh, everyone was taking notice at her ripping the, the large waves. So nice job at Steamer Lane as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that is uh, not going to wrap it up be- for the top surfers because we have the guys. We still got to go with the guys. Oh, this is hard. This is tough. And there are guys that, aren't, that are not on this list because there's something about seeing somebody surf in person where you really get a chance to appreciate what they're doing. The lines they're drawing, <coughs> excuse me, their style and all the different things that I enjoy. So, so since we never surfed together, because otherwise <laughs> I would have obliterated the list, you know. What? Who are these guys talking? So, but because we don't surf together, I didn't make it to the list. But anyway, go ahead, AV. A surfer that did make the list, number five is Dave Bainey in Finney Zone. Dave the brown Bainey. blur, right? The, the brown, brown blur. blur. Yeah. Dave is Dave is a really cool guy. Really classic. Talk yeah. about an eccentric, uh, I don't know, as he would say, steezy guy. He's a steezy guy, right? Mm-hmm. Big Laker like, fan, always hunting out for Sasquatch. And, um, <laughs> square, uh, four square Instagram fanatic. Uh, what Can't else? say enough good things about the guy. <laughs> really class act. Yeah, great family, too. Oh, wait, he's great a really dad. great surfer. That's what we were talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. He also <laughs> races, right? He also races and just... He's somebody, you know, who's helped pushing the limits of, of not only board design, but also what you can do with your stand-up boards and all the different conditions. And so... Because um, he shapes his own boards. So. Shapes his own boards. He's in Costa Rica right now doing a surf camp. So all you lucky people with Dave, you are stoked. You're with number five on AV's Picks. I mean... Wow. <laughs> that's saying something. That's saying really? something. That's right. He left so, yesterday, right? Or this morning? So coming in at number four, who coming do we have? Coming in at number four... We've got one of my favorite surfers to watch, so smooth, three-time world longboard champion, Hobie Ryder, and helping with the shaping, doing the shaping of the subsurfing, Colin McPhillips. Colin McPhillips. I gotta say, one of my biggest surfing influences growing up, I mean, I grew up in San Clemente surfing San Onofre, and Colin's like our hometown hero. He won three world titles yeah. in longboarding, and to see what he, how he's you know, transcended into stand-up and the style that he's bringing... And it's just it's just really cool. And again, another great role model, a great example, family man, yes. really out there. You know, you, if if he was a movie star, you'd never see him in the tabloids. Kind of a guy, you know. Yeah. He's just a great family guy. Nothing bad you can say about him. Yeah, and, and just, if you see Colin, you usually be seeing his kids too, having yeah. a blast at the beach. And it's amazing how talented those kids are as well. Yeah. And, and don't forget, he is a movie star. Oh, playing yeah. the double for Jay Moriarty in the J race that was just, or sorry, the J movie that was just released. Oh, I did so, know. Yeah, yeah. Colin yeah. McPhillips. All of, the, all of the Jay Moriarty longboarding was Colin McPhillips. And, oh, my And then they goodness. just, you know, put Jay's head on, on his body. And it's really cool because when you know that and you watch him surf, you can, yeah, you that can is Colin's tell. style. That's his <laughs> bottom turned off the lip. Oh, and <laughs> I don't forget watching Colin versus uh, Joe Tudor in... I think it was a U.S. Uh, yeah, U.S. Uh, surfing. It was just amazing. Yeah, event. amazing. To take down beach. Joel Tudor, you're doing something right. Yeah. And the, every single stand-up world tour event he's entered, he's made the final, so he's doing well in those events as well. And I think he wants to make it to a few more events. And I just love how his surfing has progressed in stand-up. Byron Kurt told him once, "You surf great, but you have no real finishing maneuver." Colin has finishing maneuvers yeah. now, and he is progressing <laughs> even more. So I look forward to seeing what he's doing this so now, coming year. Top three. Top three. We are in our top three. Coming in. FCS team rider. FCS team rider and current and second place in the stand-up world tour. 
Sean Pointer. Sean Pointer. Sean Pointer. Representing f- for the Floridians. Florida and now yeah. San Diego. So and traveling all Florida. over the world, surfing Chopu, surfing what big waves in Mexico. They were just in the British Virgin Islands. You know, really a homegrown American boy just out there doing what he loves to do, which is surf. And, uh, you know, bringing a really cool progressive shoreboard style yeah. to stand up. It's, it's fun to see. And Sean charges. You see him at any of the events or some of the photos that he gets. He's out there in Mexico and, and all over the world charging big waves, whether it's on a stand up or, or shortboard or whatnot. But really, really mechanical, fun surfer to watch. So congrats on your year this year, Sean. Well done. Awesome. Number two. Number two. two former world champion, two time. Coming in, AVs, number two, surfer of the year, Kai Lenny, incredible surfer. Kai Lenny, he, you know, he, again, an, another Instagram fanatic, which is so cool That's because true. you get to, you know, really see what these guys are doing every day. And he got an invite to the Jaws contest, yes. you know. So that's pretty cool. These stand up surfers, really versatile, especially the kids from Maui. A lot of them out there, you know, charging Jaws, paddling, surfing, yeah, and he stand just, up yeah. at and Jaws, everything, you know. And he wrapped up his year like December 31st, yeah. surfing Jaws, and he got to surf it alone, I think, towards the end of the day. He so did. And he's on a just, paddle land. He, he has some really great style. There's some really cool pics of him from, you know, surfing Chopu, you know. On his stand up, soul arching, and you know, not really worrying about the 30 foot monster that's chasing uh. him down. So that's pretty cool. But I'm gonna, before we go to that, you know, number one, I'm gonna give one of my honorable mentions. Yes. Just, I saw a picture of Connor Baxter taking off on this wave at Jaws, paddle in surfing, you know, traditional paddle in surfing, taking off on the left at the top the of the left. lift. One mm-hmm. of the most spectacular Jaws pictures I've seen from, you know, this winter, it looked like four three pipe if there was one. Wow. Just incredible. Like I couldn't even count how many board lengths big the wave and was. For, her, for those who don't know, you you usually don't go left. Yeah, uh, you usually so don't. Just, just memo. And you know, Con- everybody knows Connor as a really fast racer, but he's an incredible right. stand up surfer, but an incredible big wave paddle and yeah. surfer. You know, so. going left is like going to the reef. So sort of <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't go left. So, and, anyway, and along with Connor, a couple other shout outs. The current world champion from the world tour, Leco Salazar. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We haven't got to number one. I know. I, I, he's I got a shout out. Just I'm looking out for the I'm folks. Break, I'm breaking there. hearts. Let them know that they're not number okay. one right now. Okay. Leco didn't make number one. There's the other uh, Brazilian kids, the brothers that are surfing really well. The young kid from France, Artur, and a whole host of other surfers that maybe I haven't seen you surf in person. This is AV's picks, but. My favorite surfer, this guy charges. He does amazing. You never know what he's going to do on a wave. He may just go on something that he shouldn't even go on. But Zane Schweitzer, you rip. Maddie, keep documenting everything. That's I want to surf with this kid. He is incredible. It's, it's so fun watching his YouTube clips because you watch and then you're like, wait a minute. What was that that he just did? Ruined. Was that real? That's right. Was I blinking? You go back or, and forth, like, back and forth. What was forth. that, you know? And I've done that. I was like, whoa. <laughs> he's like a combination, if you are to compare him to a surfer and what they're doing in surfing, he's like a Dane Reynolds, Jordy Smith, you know, Bruce Irons combination of, you know, subsurfer. And what's amazing, <laughs> he doesn't change when he leaves the water. So when he's hang- hanging out on the <laughs> yeah. beach, he sees like a palm tree. He will run into the palm tree and do a flip. And he'll go like, hey, kid, what's going on here? He's <laughs> amazing, amazing talent. Very talented. And, and all these young kids, too, they're, they're out there charging, not just on their stand-ups. They're out there surfing big waves, um, paddle, paddle surfing. They're just doing everything that the ocean has to offer and being respectful out there, which I think is very important when you're out there on a stand-up board. And, so I, I, I thank you guys for letting me share Let's my recap, list Let's recap, recap yeah, for those yeah. who maybe got in here. So top five, we had uh, Haley Harrison. Haley Harrison, Rama top Hawaii. five female surfers. Number hey. four. Number four was Vanina Walsh, starboard. Number three. Was number three was Caroline. Ungabar. Ungabar and Hobie. There you go. Number two, Emmy Merrill, also riding for Hobie. And number one, our own Kenneth Appleby. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> How about the men? The men. We start with Dave Bainey, the brown blur. The brown blur, blur <laughs> number five. five. Number Colin f- McPhillips, three-time world longboard number champion. Number four. He number three. I forgot. Who was number three? Florida, San Diego now. 
Oh, Sean, Sean Pointer. Yeah, Sean yeah, Pointer. Yeah, yeah. Gotta know Sean Pointer. Number Eight charges. Number two. Number two, Kyle, Kyle Lenny. And, and number one was Zane. the one and only Zane Schweitzer. And we're gonna leave you with a clip of him surfing in Mexico, charging on his stand up. I believe that day it was him and Bruce Irons out. Bruce Irons was out shortboarding yes. and their jet ski helped Zane out a couple times, but just pushing, pushing, pushing the limits. Yeah, Zane. So enjoy. Have fun watching this one, and we'll be back with the health spot in a little bit. This is a new fin I designed with uh, FCS, and basically this is kind of that all-around stand-up paddle racing fin. Looking at a bunch of the, the racing crafts out there between rowing and Olympic kayaks and stuff like that, they all tend to have the same shape fin. And so what we did is we started with that racing model, and then we tweaked it a little bit, rounded it out, and uh, took a little chunk out here, which actually helps it surf a little bit. And if you need to, you can take a 14-foot race board throw a bottom turn on it. It's got just enough sweep in it so it doesn't catch kelp. Put a slightly longer base and then what I like to do is I take the fin and I set it all the way back and what it allows is it gives you a few more strokes on each side before it tends to track a little bit straighter but it still has a little bit of play so if you do need to turn you can turn the board you're not stuck in one direction. The fin is really really fast for that everyday fin if you want one fin this is the one you want.
So we have the health spot right now, one of my favorite segments, and something really crazy is going to happen in this segment. <laughs> or maybe not, like me taking prenatal vitamin. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see. Before we get to that, um, yeah, today we're going to give you some, you know, some fun healthy tips. Um, first thing on my list is healthy traveling. Everybody's sick right now. It's, it's the winter time, you know, and for those of you suffers out there that may be traveling to Surf Expo or the Orange Bowl or various events or, you know, just to go see your family, there's a couple things that you can do to try and stay healthy while you travel. Some of the things I do, um, I, I take a wellness formula and this is just an herbal, you know, defense compound that helps you when you're going to be around people that might be sick, um, gives you a little bit of extra boost. If you feel anything coming on, this is something really great to take. Source Naturals makes a great wellness formula. And I like to take capsules as opposed to caplets because the caplets are so, you know, densely right. bound that it's harder for your body to break them up. Um, so I like that. Also having, you know, when you're traveling and you have a lot of stress on your body, it's good to have something that combats the stress. So there's physical stress in your body, such as bloating and things like that. I've been traveling in compression, which really helps. Oh, wow. Yeah, because the more stress you have on your body, the more likely you are going to be to get sick. Right. So for me, you know, I, I, I retain a little bit of water when I travel. Now I travel with compression. And compression it, socks? Compression. compression um, I usually do the compression pants because, you know, you're sitting, and that's usually where the water right, collects right, is right, in, right. you know, your hips, your legs, your ankles, your feet. And so the less fatigue your body feels, the, more, the healthier your immune system is going to be. And once be. you're done with the trip, you feel a difference? When, when oh, it make, well, it makes a huge difference. You fit in your jeans better when you get to the hotel, oh, right? Go. Because your legs aren't all bloated. <laughs> but no, it, it really does make a huge difference, especially if you're going to be competing. You want your body to be at its optimum. Um, another thing while you're traveling is, you know, antioxidants are something really great that can help combat, you know, um, the cold or the flu and things like that. Maybe not necessarily the flu, but it helps, you know, build your immune system. So, you know, Kona Red is a drink that I take a lot that I've talked about, but you can't travel past a security checkpoint That's with right. your drinks. And um, they make, you know, antioxidant pills that oh, are great. So you can order these Kona Red okay. antioxidant pills online. And, uh, oh, and, and the stresses, like I was talking about. So there's the physical stress, but then there's other types of stresses. B12, taking B12 every day is something really great. Um, that I do. And hey, I'm not a doctor out there, so, you know, I'm just telling you what I do and some things that I've found that help for me. But B12 is something that's just really great, helps with stress and helps with your immune system. Um, and then, you know... Sounds powerful. I'll it, tell you what. It, it, it's good. And then, yeah. and I, I like the sublingual, which means it dissolves under your tongue. Uh -huh. So B12 sublingual, it's, it's easy for your body to absorb. Sometimes the pills don't work as well. And then, you know, if you are feeling kind of junk and you know, run down after the travel or even before the travel. Um, this is a product that I've tried. It's Reboot. Um, a fellow stand-up paddler, Brendan Rose, turned me on to this. And it's really cool. It's, I should open this. But it's, it's, you know, the ingredients are all healthy ingredients. It's got dandelion root, you know, licorice root, um, artichoke flower, lemon balm, osterola, all kinds of healthy oh, wow. things. And it's something that's supposed to kind of be an antioxidant kind of flush out your system and it's so is that it, a gel what is that it's there's a liquid in here and then you have all the you know the herbs and the powders in here well you mix it up yeah and, and this is something that you can take with you it's only two ounces of the liquid so you could put this in your bag um and it's super easy you squeeze it oh wow squeeze look at it. that yes so you mix it squeeze it ingredient. shake it let's see Shake, shake, shake. Oh, that's pretty. It's called Rebootizer Detox Shaker. So you just gotta shake it up. Shake, 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 shake. It looks like this. Here, I'll let you see it. Right? And it tastes pretty good. It's it's all natural ingredients. Once you give it a couple shakes, and then um, yeah, make sure it's all dissolved and, and try it out. Oh, wow. So, those are a couple tips to stay healthy while you're traveling. Um, Next thing for the health spot. I was in Costco the other day and I, I, I went shopping with my nephew and he said, we're out of vitamins. Can I get some of those gummy vitamins? You know, he's a kid and they, you know, it's like instead of asking for candy, he asked for the gummy vitamins, I think, you know, because they're enticing and they taste good. Well, when I got over to the vitamin aisle, they now have adult gummy vitamins. I mean, come on. That there is you go. 
for those of you who don't like to take pills or you know remember to take vitamins because they taste kind of gross they give you sometimes that after right thing you know you know and um now they have great gummy vitamins so i bought a couple i bought one fish oil with d3 and fish oil is great it's you know got omega-3s it's really good for you um and these are super good you know and they don't have any artificial colors or flavors or you know it's all good for you stuff orange raspberry and strawberry banana how is it oh this is pretty good yeah yeah so it's you, good right yeah it's like tea right there you know like yeah. you mix it in. doesn't it taste it tastes kind of like a tea because of all the different extracts like a, tea, a tea and you have like the powder thing on top and it's pretty fresh and yeah so that's re great. that's rebootizer um you want to try one of these uh, fish oil gummies? Yeah, I'll try fish oil gummies. And fish oil, again, that's another one of the, you know, if you take it in the pill form. Oh my form. gosh, you're not kidding. They're really yeah, like Yeah, no, they're gummies. Like, they look, look like candy, that. right? So. Oh go. my goodness. Wow. Oh, um, another one here is calcium. This is calcium and D. And this is, you know, got some creamy, yummy flavors. Again, it's, it's all great ingredients, all natural, no artificial anything. And, and this is another one, and this is not to start any rumors or anything, so um, let me just put that out there. But this is a prenatal vitamin, and I saw it, and I've heard before from other women that prenatal vitamins have great things in them for your hair and your nails. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it. Again, no reason, you know, don't, no, no rumors don't to be spread, it. Don't okay? Don't into it. But it's, it's basically a multivitamin that's got a couple extra really good things. And they're things. also chewy gums, but I'm not taking mm -hmm. those. And it's got great folic acid, and... and you know, I I I want to have children one day, maybe not for another four or five years. So why not be fully prepared, right? Mm -hmm. um, but again, for the hair and for the nails. <laughs> but you want to try one of these, Andre? I don't uh, think it's going to hurt you. I don't know. It's kind of. I don't have. I don't have <laughs> hair and I have short nails. All right. No, so again, scary. gummy vitamins. Something new that I found. An easier way for health conscious people that don't like regular vitamins. Um, something really great. And um, and I have an exercise tip today. An exercise ah. tip. You know, it's the new year. Everyone's got their resolutions. Some of us want to shed those extra pounds. Maybe there was a lot of holiday food going on. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, I've been working out with a new trainer. Um, Anthony and I have been going to Beach Fit CrossFit in San Clemente, and she has just been whipping us into shape. It's been awesome. And she taught me about a thing called Tabata. And I always call it, I always say it wrong, but um, I believe it's Tabata. 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 Yeah. And that's basically four minutes of intense like exercise <laughs> kind of does right <laughs> and and tabata is something that you can do really quick <coughs> just four minutes <coughs> at home excuse me you know i love this and idea four minutes yeah four minutes so right. you do Who can't do four minutes right come on so for example you're gonna if you know and it's all it's good to warm up you don't want to just go straight into this because that's how you can hurt yourself so you know do your do your stretching and get get ready like you would get ready to do right. a workout um, and say, for example, you can do it with sit-ups. You're going to do as many sit-ups as you can in 20 seconds, and then you have a 10-second rest. And then you do as many as you can for 20 seconds, 10-second rest. And you end up doing eight sets in four minutes. So your cardio and, just shoots through Yeah, the so, you know, there's been studies that show that by doing high-intensity intervals for a short period of time, but, like, at your max, can really benefit you even throughout, throughout your whole day. Um, and for your athletic performance. So it, you can do it with push-ups, you can do it with sit-ups, you can do it with paddling, sprinting as hard as you can for 20 seconds, pause for 10 seconds, and then go straight back into as hard as you can. And you're gonna know in your mind, okay, this is only four minutes, it hurts really bad, but you're gonna be able to get through it. You can do it with so many different types of exercises. Oh, I love this because I have a five minute exercise routine that I do every day, uh -huh. so I'm gonna definitely try that Yeah, out. so four minutes of as high intensity as you can, any really type of exercise, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest, and um, and it's it's gonna help. It's gonna help. It's even add that to your regular exercise yeah. routine. You know, good so. warm up. You know, wake up, do a little bit of stretching, warm up a bit, and just go at it. It is. Four it minutes. Is. It's really start fun. your day on the right note. Yeah. So that's it for the health spot. Now we have some really cool new things yeah. um, on the radar. I'm calling it what's on the radar because there's some new fun things going yeah, on in stand up are. this year. And let's start with some, there's some new events. Um, I'm really excited about this one personally because the Stand Up World Tour and Waterman League has added a women's championship oh, tour. Wow. Yep, there's going to be an official, you know, four-leg tour alongside the guys. The events will be held in 
the first one's going to be at Sunset Beach. I believe the preliminary rounds will run at Turtle Bay, and the semis and finals will be at Sunset for the women. Then, and that's in February on Oahu. Then we'll be in Brazil in April oh, with the guys. Wow. Yeah. And I, it's Ubatuba or Iba. Yeah, uh, yeah, some, yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah. to say Ubatuba. that. Ubatuba. Yeah, Ubatuba. Ubatuba. Okay. Ubatuba. Yeah. So, and that's going to be a week after the Battle of the Paddle. So that's going to be, oh, you know, wow. great event. Lots of athletes are going to be down there. So if you're going to Brazil for the Battle of the Paddle, it might be worth it to make an extended vacation and go check out that's the Stand Up World that's Tour so event. There. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, and then the third event will be in, su in Southern California. They haven't released an official location, but possibly Oceanside or Huntington Beach, maybe something like that. And the fourth event will be in France. So, oh, wow. yeah, I haven't got the for sure clarification, but I believe it's going to be a best three out of four to, to determine mm -hmm. the world champion. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to be doing the tour and it's going to oh, be fun. Nice. And I'm sure we'll see some people. Maybe uh, Morgan Hostry, I think, might be doing it. There you go. And, Talking about your surfing. There you go. Yeah. There and Vanina is. Walsh, I think, will probably be there. Maybe Talia Gangini, uh, Caroline Angabad, maybe Abala Morena. You know, there's going to be lots of great, great female surfers. And, and now the rest of the world is going to be able to see us compete against each other with live web feeds. Yeah. And, and there's going to be, you know, the first female world champion of yeah. stand-up surfing from a, a full tour. So it's going there to be really go. exciting. Nice. Different yeah. conditions, too. Mixing it up. Always great. And the other event, I just kind of mentioned it, Battle of the Paddle that's Brazil. Right. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Same race style format as Battle of the Paddle California with a few changes implemented. Um, I believe that the women and men elite races will have separate race finals. Oh, um, yep, okay. that's something that I've got clarification from, from um, some of the Battle of the Paddle organizers. That's for sure, for certain happening at California next year and I believe happening in Brazil. And possibly a separate distance race start for the men and women as well. So that's going to be exciting, live webcast. Same prize money as California, so it'll be fun to see the field travel to Brazil, and there might be some hometown heroes in Brazil that yeah, we haven't heard of yet. They so got one there called Monsters. Huh? Called, they call him the Animal. The Animal. So, oh, <gasps> gee, going to Brazil to meet the Animal. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So we do have an announcement uh, the, about Supia. The Stand Up Paddle Industry Association is being launched. We already have a board of directors. <laughs> And uh, there will be a meeting at the Surf Expo coming up. So uh, with some, uh, I'm going to actually be giving a presentation and sharing some interesting insights on over, I think it's over 200,000 visitors that we've had wow. to our website. So, so it's Stand Up be, Paddle Industry Association. That's S -U -P -I -A. right. S-U-P-I-A. Yeah, Supia. Supia. Yeah, Supia. That's kind of I like that. I like yeah, that. Pretty. So, and so what is this really for, and, in and layman's way, terms, for the regular people out there that don't really know what all that means, what is that, what's the intention of that to do for our sport? So as cliche as it sounds, we do have a mission statement. We can look it up on the website, but uh, it's, uh, we are trying to, you know, get the whole industry together to address needs that people might have to have, to help each industry member to grow the sport in a sustainable fashion. So in a very simple way, that's what it is. There are a lot of issues that have come up and uh, by banding together, you know, we also believe that you can have strength in numbers. So that's what it is. Awesome. Helping to negotiate with trade shows, maybe shipping rates. You can go to uh, supindustry.org. There is a website and you can learn more there about it. We just launched it uh, a few weeks ago and we have over like 30 members or so. Wow, that's, it's, that's incredible. Uh, no, it is amazing. So there is well, a huge industry support. I uh, have some, you know, large companies, mid-sized companies, small companies, retailers, <laughs> manufacturers, and a lot of support for this. So we're really excited. About awesome. That. You know, the sport is growing at leaps and bounds and it's about time that we have our own industry association. It is about it time. Is. Yeah. So, so awesome. you want to check it out and become a member. And right around the corner, you just said Surf Expo. So some of us will be going to Surf Expo. You'll be I'll out be there. I'll be in Orlando and at the Surf Expo, and you'll be going to Miami, right? I will. I'll be at the Orange Bowl. The that Orange is going to be fun. It's a great event. I remember last year standing on the line for the race, and there was a manatee right under my board. Yeah, yeah. And it was, I, I was like that. a little kid. It was so much fun. No, Just I remember that. Great event, great venue. Um, so if you want to see her, go to Miami. If you want to see me, go to Orlando. It's, it's going to be fun. If you don't want to see either one of us, go to both places. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to get Anthony back in here to give, his, give his farewells. It was a pleasure having him today on the show. Um, 
Anthony Vela top picks. It was awesome. Here you can come come join us in the frame here. I'll sit right here. Anthony, did I'll you wanna did I'll you wanna any. say goodbye to anybody today? Uh, um, give any shout outs? I'd like to give a shout out to everyone from Boardwalks and Boardwalks. Boardworks, <laughs> Boardwalks. Oh, it's all the, all the Monopoly. All the Monopoly Boardwalk. <laughs> Park Place uh, to Mike Fox and Gretchen and Phil from Boardworks for helping make all this uh, be possible for me. I'm really stoked and lucky to be part of such a cool company and get a chance to, you know, get out there and meet so many amazing people and go to all these events. So it's pretty cool. Um, and I just got on Twitter. Okay. That's so, right. I just got on Twitter. Anthony Bell, after uh, 20 years. Yes, I have one follower, so you're not allowed so to follow funny. me. So I'm not going to tell you what the handle is. or It's handle, huh? right? Yeah, See, yeah, I know. Yeah. Twittering. Tweet so, him. Uh, so what's Anthony Bell is up. What's your, uh, Anthony Is it? Vela right. Sup. Yeah. There you go. So go to Twitter and look up Anthony Vela Sup. Have you followed me yet? <laughs> yes, of course. There of course go. I have. There you go. All right. Cool. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Look forward to yeah, another it's fun year. To say also, that uh, thanks to Boardworks, who is also a supporter of the show and who makes the show possible together with our other sponsors. So SurfTech, Apps, yes, you want to check them on subconnect.com. Make sure you support them so that we can continue to have this show and other great things that we put out there for you. So we'll see you in Orlando, maybe Miami, or maybe elsewhere. And, keep paddling. In right? a few weeks, we'll be right back here in the set. That's right.